Welcome to East Coast DNA. I'm your host, R.C. Walsh. And uh, today we have uh, another special guest that actually took time to come visit us here in Glasgow at the apartment. So uh, welcome, Ryan. How's it going? So it's Ryan McKay. Yep. And you're originally from the Pictou County area. Yeah, say. I was born in New Glasgow. And uh, I probably moved away when I was four years old or so. Um, grew up in North River, outside of Truro. Lived in the city for a while, and now I live in Elmsdale. And when did you yourself start into music? We had a little chat here um, before we start recording. I know a little I bit of your history. I was probably 14, 15. My mom knew I wanted a guitar, and we dug out my aunt's old acoustic that was barely playable um, out of the attic, and I was pretty hooked right away. And, yeah, I just kept at it, and... Here I am. And so you mentioned in uh, the original communication when we were chatting back and forth to uh, your previous band, The Age, and we did just have a little chat about that, but uh, maybe for our viewers, if you want to give just a little bit of a <laughs> recap of uh, The Age and a little bit of background on your musical career there. Yeah, so The Age, we were we were all brothers. We were really close. And... Uh, we spent a lot of time in the studio and we were just going hard at it for a while there. But I think, uh, that was probably back between, I'd say 2012 to 2016, I guess, or 2017, maybe. Um, but yeah, we released a few albums and, um, they still hold up to this day. We had some shows with Garrett Mason and we did pretty well. And what was the decision to go off and do this new project then? Well, it was a kind of a coincidence. I bought a new guitar and I had to justify to my wife why I spent so much money on my new guitar. So I went and got uh, some of my old gear out of the closet and sold it to a guy on Kijiji. And he just so happens to have his own studio and invited me there and we started jamming. His name's Glenn McDonnell. He's an awesome musician and he's really good with the, the engineering side of it. And yeah, we, uh, we just start practicing some stuff together and I bring some tunes to him and uh, the latest song that we did was uh, Easy Now and He's featured on that on drums and bass. And yeah, we're still got a bunch of other stuff in the works. We're so Easy Now is the first song that you have out? Yeah, it's the first song since the age. And you're releasing this just under your own name? Yeah, I figured what's more authentic than just yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> we're not technically a band. We're, you know, it's a guy writing songs and yeah. And so it's a two piece at this point. Yeah, at this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna write all the material, get some get enough stuff to kind of be able to play shows again, and maybe we'll look for a bass player or something to add to the team. And so, have you humored performing any of this live? Because it would be tricky to do it as a two piece at this point. Oh yeah, no, uh, it would be tricky. Even with a th as a three piece, it'll be a little bit stripped down mm -hmm. because. That's one of the problems the age kind of faced because we started as a three piece back in the day, and I always wanted that other guitar playing while I was doing the solos and stuff like that. So we ended up getting that. But I mean, if you look at someone like Hendrix, like it's nice to have. It's good enough to have the bass going while the other while the guitar is going. Yeah. You know? Sure, sure, for sure. <laughs> so now you're you mentioned Hendrix, but what other type influences did you have as far as maybe not so much with the age? but for this new project? Well, overall, my, my mus musical influences in my life are definitely like the Beatles, Rolling Stones. I mean, they're all cliche kind of bands, but they are like the best. Hendrix, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Um, as far as mod more modern band, I love The Strokes. I always like mm -hmm. The Strokes. Um, when I was in junior high, everything was rap. Yeah, yeah. Much music and when the Strokes came out with like Last Night and Someday, those two first singles they had, I thought, man, like rock and roll is still alive. Like, strokes and uh, in that era when they would have like just 
seem to come out of nowhere. The the vines, like a few bands. There was a lot of that type of music happening at that time. Yeah, it was yeah. just all of a sudden there was rock coming back. I mean, Green Day stuck around through that little uh, pop punk explosion that we had, like the it turn was of the like century. A rock revival almost. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in a time when everyone's wearing baggy jeans and bandanas. I mean, it, it gave uh, validation to my tight pants and long hair. Sure, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I definitely, uh, styles have been kind to me over the years because they've been heavily influenced by music, and that's probably where I'm getting my influence with that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're you're able to merge some of those styles, but I definitely know what you mean. That stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason, especially when it comes to what somebody looks like that's into a specific well, I genre. Style, I was going off what they dressed like in the 60s and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I always loved that like era of like just looking like a rock star. Like, and actually, funny, you mentioned uh, the Rolling Stones there as well, and then you, you, were, you were slightly dismissive of it as it being like kind of an older generation band, but the Rolling Stones just had a brand new I single see, out, and it's doing really I well from what I can see. It's standing after all these years. It's insane. <laughs> So, I mean, I mean, that's... They were one of the har har hardest uh, partying bands. Oh, I know. They did everything you're not supposed to do if you want to survive, and they're still out there. Yeah. They probably made a deal with the devil somewhere along the way. Their blood's been pickled. It's just, <laughs> they're just going to stick around forever, apparently. Yeah. It's a nice nice thought, though, that you still no. have, like, another, like, 40, 50 years left in your musical career, for I sure. I sometimes wonder if, like, it's a blessing and a curse to be going that long. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm you sure. You want to hear the song that they, you wrote 40 years ago. Yeah. And you probably want to play your new stuff, but generally people are going to the show to hear your old stuff. Oh, yeah, but the, the advantage is they could be, get away with just the one single and then do a tour off that if, if yeah. they really wanted to. No, I, mean, I don't know if I they want to really tour at I'm this point. I'm stoked they're still around. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Um, I liked it when Mick, uh, what's his name? Mick Taylor was in the band mm -hmm. in the early 70s. I like that era. And obviously, Brian Jones. Brian Jones formed the band. And he passed away in, I think, 69, around there. So would you credit your influences from that era of music? Is that uh, something that you were exposed to at a younger age? or? It's weird because, uh, actually, um, I think it was grade 8, I was uh, going to do a music project and everyone was doing Limp Bizkit or Eminem or Blink-182 and my dad, of all people, uh, he's like, did you ever hear The Doors? And I was like, who are the, you know, who are The Doors? And oh, well, there you go. If you if you could say who are The Doors, I, that's an awesome project to do. So I did The Doors for a music project in grade eight and everyone was like looking at me like I had two heads. But personally, I, I became like, because I read a, a book on the doors and Jim Morrison and all that to do the project on and it it uh, really allured me into that whole mysticism and like because the doors are more than a band they're you know the doors itself the band name means the doors of perception it comes from that Aldous Huxley mm -hmm. um, which is you know obviously about opening your mind and um, but yeah I became kind of people used to call me Jim Morrison when I was younger because I I, I kind of wanted to like I grew the long hair. I wore the aviators. Like, I partly thought I probably was Jim Morrison when I was young enough, you know. But were you doing some cover tunes at the time too? Um, I was just obsessed with the Doors. At one yeah, point. my whole room was the Doors. Like, I really just fell in love with the whole. I thought Jim Morrison was like a just like the epitome of uh, front man. You know? Did you have the flag on the wall yeah. with, like, within like the topless? Jim I had Morrison a different or... one. It was like the yeah. whole band. I had a flag. Okay. With the whole band on it, but um, yeah, it kind of it really opened my eyes to like the other side in a way. We I know he's the song "Break on the yeah, Other yeah. Side," but it really did open me to that whole world um, for sure. And now, maybe you don't want to get too much into it, but before we started recording, when we were talking about kind of transitioning from the age into your solo stuff, you did also, it kind of parallels the influence there a little bit. You did have some substance abuse, I guess, at oh, some yeah. point. Like, I mean, I we're talking to, alcohol here. Yeah, so. yeah, no, I used to be pretty, quite the party animal back in the day, um, late nights and... I mean, I thought it went hand in hand with rock and roll. 
Mm-hmm. It, it, is, it easily can. <laughs> it doesn't have to, though. No, it def- definitely doesn't have to. And that's one thing. And the reason I wanted to bring it up is that I, I, you've been sober for yeah. a while now. So I don't drink anymore. This month actually marks a year of not drinking. Um, I have nothing against it, but I just find overall my quality of life is better. I'm happier. I can have fun. You know, I don't need to be drinking to have fun. Um, that song, Easy Now, is the first song I've ever done completely sober. And um, it feels good to, you know, I got to a point where you're taking substances to feel free. Mm-hmm. But are you free if you need the substance to feel it? Yeah, that's a very intelligent way of looking at it you're not free you're a you're a slave to the substance Mm -hmm. whether it be drinking smoking weed whatever it is um you know there's nothing wrong with some of that stuff and there's nothing wrong with experimenting there's nothing wrong with everything in moderation but i'm an all or nothing kind of guy (laughs) and uh i just like to you know go with uh, the natural these days and so with the newfound sobriety, and I mean, congratulations, a year is very noteworthy. And so hopefully it's not too much of a struggle at this point. No, it, it, maintain yeah, it. honestly, it's it's not even, it's easy at this point. So, I still drink non-alcoholic beer every now and then just because I miss yeah, beer. Yeah. And, you know. That's one thing in the, the landscape of the music scene and uh, anybody that's listened to enough of these episodes has heard me offer my different opinions but and i mentioned it to you it may appear to a lot of people that i don't drink at all and some people think that maybe i don't drink because i had some type of an issue but people that are around me enough have seen me have a drink or two here and there Mm -hmm. and it's kind of that approach of i don't feel like i need to have a drink to have a good time and it's freaking expensive oh yeah and the older we get the longer it takes to recuperate so i mean there's a lot of a lot of cons back like i used to yeah (laughs) do you find that having that well obviously it changes your lifestyle in general but going back into the music where you had a little bit of a break from it as well did you find your songwriting approach was different you know because what? of that? I actually find it so much easier to craft songs now. Yeah. Like when I was younger, I used to think that substances and alcohol were like what you need to be creative. Mm-hmm. But once I stopped using stuff, I found that the creativity was like exponentially more. Like it's weird. I never used to think like that. But ever since I stopped drinking, it's like looking back, drinking was kind of like a, a block to my creativity. Yeah, it kind of get. I guess people lean on that stuff for like to get the juices flowing in some yeah. cases, and but, that's fine at the beginning. Yeah, and like to get that little spark going and have a little bit of fun, but it gets to the point where you, you know, you rely on the booze or mm-hmm. like you, it's like I consider it like a middleman. Once you take out the middleman, it's just you and the music. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Like, cause if you if you can't enjoy yourself without those things, then it's it's taken on. It's own it's, life and its own it's not different good. thing. And I mean, we've had, I mean, in the music industry, it's, it's a known thing that people go too far with that stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I am, I am very pleased to say that over the last couple of years of me mentioning this stuff, I'm a little bit more aware when I go and record myself offering opinion of how I act afterwards, which is just going to identify to myself that I'm a hypocrite if I do something differently. But I did notice that the venues have offered a lot more options than they used to when you're going to see a concert. Yeah. It's it's a lot more... When you go up to a counter and you order pop and the only other options are apple juice or orange juice like sometimes you feel it's kind of like a child I, in went those. To, I went to see uh, my buddy's band uh mcgrath his band shadow folk i seen them with the carlton about a month ago or so mm-hmm. i went in and i sat down at the table and someone comes to offer me a drink and i felt weird not accepting it because it's it they're like hey can i get you a drink i'm like no i'm good and they're like oh they're kind of like it's it's not a reaction that they usually get I don't yeah think, at you know 10 o'clock at night on a saturday or whatever um but and then probably a half hour later someone else came over hey no one got you a drink uh, can i get you a drink 
and I just made a joke. I'm like, I've drank enough for a couple lifetimes already. I'm good. Yeah. Like, thanks, though. The, the non-alcoholic beer is cheap enough that it's worth just as a prop to keep well, people away from that, too. You shouldn't have to at all, but, I mean, that, that works. It's Sometimes it's like, I get it, because uh, when I was younger, it was a social thing. Mm-hmm. And it's it's like that social anxiety of being around people and in a crowd and stuff. It, it eases that, and you know, it eases it. Oh, absolutely. I, I go to a lot of the, like, anybody that follows our social media channels is probably where I go to way too many live performances. Anytime I can, I go out. So a lot of those I do end up going by myself because you can't possibly find anyone yeah. that can accommodate that type of schedule, right? Yeah. Like, even the bands can't go out every night, right? But I will order, like, a mocktail or something just to have something to do while I'm sitting at the table, too. Like, just... Yeah, well, it gives you something in your hand. And yeah. It takes away that, like, awkwardness of, like, I don't know. I'm sure there's a psychiatrist out there that has a better way of us <laughs> handling this. There's probably some, uh, like, root cause to yeah. why you feel the need to hold something when yeah, you're in public. But Well, when I was first quit drinking last December, my buddy invited me to this little house show. And I was like, okay, this is, like, one of the first social drinking events that I'm going to have to go to and not drink. And I brought non-alcoholic beer with me just because mm-hmm. I knew that it, being so new to not drinking, I knew that it was going to be just habit to want something in my hand. And my buddy's like, what do you drink? I'm like, it's actually non-alcoholic. Yeah, I, I used to pick up, uh, before there was non-alcoholic beer options everywhere, if I was going somewhere and driving, or I knew I wasn't staying out with the group I was going to visit, I'd pick up a six-pack of Dad's root beer because it had the glass bottles. I remember being a kid and buying those and pretending to drink yeah which is like i don't know six pack of dad's root beer yeah. and a package and a pack of, of uh, popeye cigarettes yeah <laughs> yeah Perfect. actually i saw it wasn't popeye cigarettes but candy cigarettes uh, for sale in pecto oh, yeah. just along the waterfront there like a week or two ago i was the tempted popeye to pick up si- a couple of they came in a little pack and they had the little red ends yeah but i think over time now when you get them they don't have the right ends oh they don't know it's just it a not. candy stick of yeah. sugar yeah oh perfect <laughs> They were classic though, and like I remember sitting down, actually being in this area. Like that was my my nan and papa grew up over in, or they lived over in Stellarton there, and we used to walk down to Main Street in Stellarton and get like a six pack of Dad's root beer, mm-hmm. and we'd buy those sick candy cigarettes and sit there to pretend. I don't know why we thought that was cool at like ten years old, but like you're younger than me, so you wouldn't remember them probably because I think they were taken off the market. But you used to be able to get. Uh... They were bubble gum sticks that were in a little cigarette package. Oh, yeah. And same kind of idea, but they had a real paper wrapper on oh, them. I think so, I do remember those. But they had a, must have been like a powder sugar or something that was in between the yeah. paper and the gum. So when you had a fresh dry pack, if you put it in your mouth and blew out, it would send out a puff of smoke because it was oh, just really? like the sugar powder coming oh, out. I don't remember that. I, I guarantee they took those off the market because it looked way too much like they were really smoking. I feel like but... I remember the packaging, but I don't remember the actual... Yeah. Because um, I remember there was ones that had the actual paper. Someone showed me at one point or something. Yeah. Yeah, that looks young, pretty good. But... See, now anybody watching this, like, how does that have anything to do with music? We're going to end up finding a way for you to market it. We're going to have a little bubblegum cigarettes <laughs> with your logo on it. A yeah. QR code for your yeah. single on the back. Yeah, exactly. You just wait. You just wait out there, people. That's exactly what you're <laughs> And you're going to end up buying them at one of these shows. So what is the next step then? You have a few songs that you're kind of working on, but yeah, nothing. Ever since I kind of did that first song, um, it's really kind of made me realize that it's not over. I, you know, it's just the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, I guess, the genesis of the, the new age of whatever this creative thing is. But uh, I got a bunch of other songs. I, re- I don't know, it just sparked something in me and something that was kind of laying dormant for a while. And I've always been writing, but it was kind of a hard pill to swallow when the band kind of went our own separate ways. And, um, I mean, I have a three year old daughter now, Mm -hmm. so I'm busy taking care of her, raising her. And, but my escape now is the studio and going there and being creative and working and yeah, I got a bunch of songs coming just in the works. It sounds like you spent a lot of time kind of, getting your house in order whether or not you realized that's what you were doing yeah yeah i was kind of getting myself 
put back together after years of abuse. <laughs> and so now you're at this new launching point. Yeah. So where should we direct people if they want to follow you online to see what else you have coming up? Uh, RyanMcKay.BandCamp.com. Um, but I'm going to get all my stuff on all those new age uh, mm-hmm. streaming platforms i just haven't gotten around to it yet it's actually incredibly easy when you do I sit down I, I know it's just the matter of that sitting down to do it the I first know. time you have to get a distributor though to do it yeah and so i'm just i looked into it i'm gonna use a i guess a lot of people use distro kid yes is what a lot of people use these days but when i was in the band years ago like none of that stuff was even a thing so mm-hmm it, you know, uh, CD Baby's another one that I see a lot. I know they uh, discontinued the physical arm of their distribution, but they still do digital distribution yeah. as well. I always was a fan of something physical. Mm-hmm. Like uh, to this day, like I mean, you should see my CD collection. Like I, if I like a band, I'll go buy the CD. Yeah, like, I'd like to open it up, look at the pictures, look at the lyrics. It's just like an experience for me. Like in, I mean it. Obviously, with vinyls, it was like, vinyls are cool. I have a record player, but it's not as practical as a CD. Oh, I, I love my records, and you can probably it, you can probably just see them peeking out over the couch. Yeah, like records the video, sound but, awesome. There's nothing like... But you can see my CDs from I where mean, you're you sitting, too. you can grab too. a CD and put it in your car. Yeah, that's, and, I still have a CD player you know, in my car. So. I, I, my car is full of... It's always a rotating cast of albums that are... Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, no, they're they're a glorious thing to collect. That's I mean, for sure. People, kids these these days probably think CDs are ancient, but like to me, they're just they're still relevant. Actually, my daughter down the hall has a little stack in there now. Does She's, she? Yeah, a few a few of them are signed already too. See, but... I don't think everything should go into the digital realm. Yeah, I think not it's great. I think it's great to get things out there, but it takes away from the physicality of things. Like yeah, yeah, like tangible in your hand. That goes with everything. Like mm-hmm. the more that everything goes digital on your phone, the less we have to like we'll actually connect. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird it's a weird double edged sword where in the age of social media, in an age where it's supposed to connect everyone together, it's actually somehow disconnected everybody. Yeah, because everyone can do everything <laughs> all the time. But like people can't even like they're so used to just like even chatting through a screen mm-hmm. that when it gets to be real life situation they don't know what to say yeah like you know what i mean yeah i don't know exactly what it's a mean. weird double-edged sword and it can be used for great things like because of social media like this is going to be online mm-hmm. but there's just you know you got to be careful not to get too consumed with it oh yeah no i, I well anybody that like once again, anybody that follows us on social media is aware of this. I I have my spurts where I'm obviously not doing much more than posting yeah, stuff. No, no, it's it's all good. I, anyone that follows my personal accounts also realizes I spent the last few days at the beach just around here in Pecta County too. Oh so, man, I, mean, I spent. I'm probably off. red because I spent all day yesterday at the beach. Oh yeah, no, we got to get it in. The, um, the the second summer that we've been afforded is just glorious. I I, I people don't realize how lucky we are to be on the ocean. Oh, yeah. Like, you either are on the West Coast or the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Everything in between doesn't get the ocean. Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) Like, you know, it's, uh, I grew up here my whole life, and it only, only probably seven years ago or so, I realized, holy shit, there's beaches everywhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I really try to take advantage of it now at this point. Yeah, so I I was chatting with one of my musician friends last night that they have to write a song about the beach or an ocean or something because I keep taking pictures there. It's either I'm taking pictures of bands or I'm taking pictures of the beach or Are the ocean. Are you at Mel Murby? Or? Uh, actually, Mel Murby two days ago. Yesterday I did uh, Sinclair's Wharf and uh, Powell's Point. It's nice to check them all out. Oh, yeah, and I want to get them in too because we did have quite a wet summer, so I want to try to get That's, a few more in before yeah, we I know. get into gloom. I know, those last couple in. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we usually go to Conrad's. It's out, out by Lawrencetown Beach. Oh yeah, yeah. And but yesterday we went to Rainbow Haven, and Rainbow Haven's super nice. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna have to check that one out too. Um, it's out that way, but there, there's so many everywhere. It's, it's it's hard to it's hard to go too far without just pulling over. If you over ever want to take out. a really good trip, like I mean, it's gonna take you longer than it takes me. And from Elmsdale, it's probably about. I'd say an hour and a half, maybe. Yeah. But did you ever hear of uh, 
Carter's Beach. Yes, I haven't been. I've oh, seen man. pictures. It, it looks beautiful. I've heard of it for years, and then yeah. last year I took the time to go check it out. It's worth the trip. It's like you're in a tropical paradise. Yeah. It's yeah. actually white sand. Yeah. And the water, since the sand's white, the water's like crystal clear blue. Like it, it's it's like those pictures of like down south. Like yeah. It's you don't feel like you're in Nova Scotia when you're there. No, I feel like I can't go back to work this week. I gotta try to take a little <laughs> little day trip or something. Uh, the only thing about that beach is the water's some cold. Yeah, I did hear that too. It's it's yeah. It's unreal how cold that water is. Like yeah. it's because of the currents or whatever, but Oh, well, makes for some pretty pictures. It's funny, last year was the hottest was day. The yeah. beach was packed and no one was in the water. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, sitting in the sand is nice too, though. I was in the water. For that. I was taking the shock to my system. Oh, yeah, well, there you go. That it seems to be a common thread with the musicians. Maybe that's why I'm not playing any of these instruments sitting around the room. <laughs> I need to start getting in that cold water. <laughs> it, it really revitalizes you. Like, it, it, it almost like, you know... There's something I've never done the whole cold plunge thing. But yeah. When you're in water like that's pretty cold, like it, I think there's even some kind of science behind it where it, it actually like releases something in your body or something that. Oh yeah, there definitely is. is. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's something about it. After you get out, you just you feel revitalized. Yeah. No, actually, I think uh, after this, if the sun's gonna stick around, it looks like we're getting more than we were told that we were gonna get in the forecast. But I'm not complaining. I think I might have to. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Might have to hit somewhere with some water here this mm-hmm. afternoon too. Yeah, for sure. So before we uh, take off here, the new song that you have out, uh, "Easy Now," will uh, play off with that for everyone here, right. and uh, people know where to find you online. You don't have any gigs coming up yet. No, I want to focus on writing, and I want to have all the songs like basically concreted. Mm-hmm. Um, completed and it's it's just e- I don't know it's easy to work with one other guy yeah yeah it's it's actually like a really nice like it's nice to have the group thing where you all have your opinion and you all it's a, it's great to have that group thing but when you have one other guy that you're working with it's just quick and mm-hmm. um, there's no there's not as much debating about things and it's just like collaborations are great and they have their place yeah and the more cooks in the kitchen, the harder it is to have a final That's product. A good, That's a good way of putting yeah. it. I find now I have more of a vision of what I want. And I can, I, I just have a vision for it and, you know, it comes out and it's, I mean, obviously there's some tweaking and like getting some certain sounds and stuff, but it's just quick. And so once everything's done and recorded, then we'll probably try to find a bass player. Mm-hmm. And Glenn will probably play drums i'm assuming that's what the plan is awesome so anyone watching this that likes what you hear maybe uh keep an eye on these guys and see where they go in the next few months they might be looking for a new member and uh if you guys want to check out ryan in the future there's a link in the description below and uh, right now we'll play off with easy now all right thanks again ryan no problem and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon sounds good